Helium One is the only pure play helium company listed in the UK. Its most advanced asset is the Rukwa Rift Basin project in Tanzania. One of its prize assets is the drilling rig that it owns. Sam Wahab is the new energy analyst at Liberum, and this month he has released a research note on the company. So Sam, welcome, and let's start with what is on the very first page top right why have you dropped the target price from 20 pence a share to 5.3 pence a share hi sarah um yes that's a good question so the reason behind the share price or target price drop was largely out of equity dilution so we know that the company has engaged in uh, a number of fundraisings over the last six to nine months that's uh, been largely due to the drilling activity they've undertaken and the success that we've recently seen them uh, achieve and so that is purely equity dilution in terms of actual value to uh, investors the valuation that we put out is actually 12 and a half percent higher than it was before at the last target price of 20p Okay, so Sam, let us drill into the company's inventory. I'm just wondering how prudent the shift from Thai 3 to Itambula was, because both have been described as having the potential for world-class discovery. I'm just wondering which is the most likely for that world-class discovery? Well, if we go back to the broad portfolio of assets that Helium One currently has, um, if you go back to the competent persons report that was released in the admission document a number of years ago um, we did see um, a multitude of potential prospects that they can go after subsequent to that the company high graded a number uh, of them Itambula and Thai being two of the uh, where they see the most commercial avenues to take they started with Thai again I think that 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 was proven to be quite successful they uh, encountered certain play types in the upper and lower Karoo and the basement certainly looks interesting and obviously something that they may revisit in the future but going back to your question on in terms of prudence I think it was very prudent to move over to Itambula and the ge geological understanding that they gained from Thai um, pushed them to actually move the well pad prior to that drill at Itambula and as we've seen with flowing 4.7% uh, helium to surface it was the right decision to make. So 4.7% features quite often within your research note. What is it about that magic number, 4.7%? Well, it proves to be a very, very high concentration of helium relative to the global prospect inventory. There is a part of, of that note where I sort of rank different prospects across the globe. Um, if you look, I mean, a lot of them are in the US or Canada, uh, where they have commercial accumulations of helium that they're producing, and they're all the way down to sub 1%, many of them at 0.5%. So when you consider that uh, that Itambula has flowed 4.7% helium to surface, they're in a really good place uh, currently, although still early days. So what should the company be doing? What can the company be doing with that magic 4.7%? I'm just wondering, what are the next steps? Funding for extraction, processing plants, partnerships, going back to Thai 3? Well, there are a number of op options that they've got available to, to them. And, uh, you know, that's not a bad place to be with flowing the 4.7 to, to surface. I think where, where they need to start, and they did recently put out um, an update on, on where they're looking to. At the moment, they've got to really understand uh, what they have here. They've done a drill stem test. So they've successfully flown that to surface at 0 0.5 uh, million cubic feet per day. That's good news. But we really need to determine volumetrics here and commerciality. And in order to do that, they'll have to undertake an extended well test, which they plan to do in Q3 24. And then at that point, that will determine potentially management estimates of size or commerciality. They can then look at fluid samples and see the fluid composition. And then at that point, they may choose to go back deep and tie three into the basement there, prove up further volumes there, see whether that's very similar to Itambula, um, or they can go straight into potentially commercializing Itambula, and that would be engaging with off takers. And depending on flow rates, uh, you know, if they are significant, then this could be, you know, move into fulfilled development territory, which would require appraisal well. Um, so yeah, uh, ma many cards that they have at their disposal, but uh, all will really rest on the next extended well test. So Sam, do you think that the worst is behind Helium One? Because there were so many horror stories about delayed rigs, damaged rigs, the rainy season. Is it just pure sheer optimism 
ahead for Helium One? I think it was actually quite a prudent approach to take to purchase their own rig. They're not at the mercy of rig contractors anymore. Uh, the, the rig is currently hot stacked. And yes, they did face uh, operational challenges during the first world. But, you know, this is this is drilling we're talking about. And every company across the world, whether you're Exxon or whether you're an independent, will face some issues with the rigs uh, along the way. We currently saw, well, we saw at the Itambula well that there were there were no uh, downtime issues at all, which is good news. It means that, you know, they've increased their understanding of the rig's capabilities. Um, and that rig is currently hot stacks, uh, so ready to go as and when they need it. Uh, unlike if they were at the mercy again to rig contractors, they'll have to wait for a slot, which could take, you know, an extended period of time, given the re remoteness of the Rukwa Basin. Um, but in terms of the drilling activity, I, I, I always go back to this. It, it's actually quite remarkable what the management team has managed to achieve here. If you look at the North Sea, for, for example, it took 40 odd worlds to, to make a commercial discovery. They've managed to, you know, flow uh, helium to surface here uh, in what three three worlds. It's it, it's significant. So I think they're in a really good place. Um, as with all exploration, uh, it, you know, it comes with its risks. So I wouldn't say all the bad news is behind them, but I think that they've successfully overcome challenges that have been presented to them to date. And, uh, you know, the, the, the next steps, we, we wait and see. And I think what's often overlooked is about is the benefits of being a mining company in Tanzania. It's a very sort of mining friendly jurisdiction. Indeed, it is. And I also think that the Tanzanian government would look on Helium One quite favourably, given what they've achieved to date. Um, they clearly would have a very good relationship with them. It could bring another commodity, another commercial commodity to the country. And, um, and long may that continue. How difficult is it to calculate a Helium-associated company, bearing in mind that helium is not traded on an exchange, but traded through long-term offtake agreements. I'm just wondering, is the price of helium transparent? Is the gas therefore difficult to put a value on? And this impacts target prices, for example. Yes, it does. Um, and th that can present an issue. What we do know is in terms of the global helium market, that the prices have been steadily increasing. Um, that's really a function of um, shortages uh, across the world. We've not actually seen it decrease over the last 15 years. And um, if you look into current Chinese uh, import prices, they're around $500 uh, per 1,000 cubic feet, which uh, hasn't fallen. And they've been increasing to towards the $1,000 per 1,000 um, cubic feet steadily. And it has actually achieved that milestone in uh, recent months. So the price isn't going down. Um, the requirement for or the demand for helium is only increasing. Uh, if you look at its uses, uh, it's not just party balloons. It's you know it's going into some some major uh, infrastructure, whether that be in medical um, appliances or technology. Uh, an increasing part of the world we live in is uh, um, is artificial intelligence, and that's only going to grow. That requires data centers, which again requires helium. So I think the price will continue to be tight, and helium one can capitalize that with commercial volumes of helium. So looking at your note, there's not many helium explorers in the world. The larger players within the space are notable. Exxon, Gazprom, Saudi Aramco. I'm just wondering if Helium One is in their sights. Possibly, yeah. I mean, if they can prove up Itambula and, and indeed Thai, I wouldn't see uh, any shortage of admirers for a company like Helium One. Uh, this is in obviously a, a key location in, you know, geographically. It's high quality helium. It's pure helium as well. Uh, it, you know, some of the companies you mentioned there, they do produce helium, but it's often associated with hydrocarbons, which has its own challenges. It has, you know, it, it costs more to to uh, pull those two commodities apart um, and again obviously with the energy transition uh, it doesn't really tick that ESG box so it is quite a unique play that Helium One have uh, encountered and uh, you know we all look forward to seeing see how they commercialize it. So you say you we all look forward to seeing how they commercialize it have you have you seen it yet have you seen the operations yet have you been on site? It's it's on my bucket list. Um, the plan is potentially to go later this year, um, hopefully alongside the extended world test, which would be uh, which would be quite exciting to see uh, in in its flesh. So yeah, that's the plan, and look forward to it as and when it comes. 
Sam. Absolutely. It's been a, a joy to work with you again. The last time was eight years ago, but yeah. helium, helium one. Um, so can we anticipate another research note once you've been on site in Q3? Absolutely. I'll be following this uh, very closely and uh, yeah, do expect a lot more news flow, both from the company and myself as and when that happens. Thank you, Sam Wahab, new energy analyst at Liberum. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Sarah.